no regrets. conceptualization stage itself, a great deal of thought and energy should go into whether we have the resources, financial, technical, and manpower to complete it. A project becomes a project only if its expected outcome corresponds approximately to assumptions made in the project itself. Where assumptions of outcomes are themselves doctored to launch a project, someone, most likely the state, is bound to suffer in the long term. The history of projects in India and in some other parts of the world, I think in most parts of the world, is replete with instances of underestimation of costs, underestimation of time frames required for completion and overestimation of expected benefits. Sometimes we are driven to start projects by populism or by ill-formed ideas promoted by over-enthusiastic individuals who have not carefully thought through the project from the stage of conceptualization to the stage of completion. Some of these projects are ill-timed in the sense that they could perhaps come alive later. And I always think of uh, Muhammad bin Tughlaq when I think of this, because uh, he had some ideas. He wanted to shift the city of uh, the capital of his empire from Delhi to Daulatabad in the middle of the country. Very good idea, shifting to the middle. But uh, he shifted the entire population. When he went there, he found that they could survive there. So he brought them all back. And in the process, thousands died. 
And then again, he looked at the Chinese example. And he said, why not we introduce token currency? And uh, so token currency was introduced. Nobody accepted it. So these are ideas that at the, in a later time, maybe a century, couple of centuries later, it has a meaning. But uh, if you try to do it when you're not prepared, then the chances of failure are much greater. So we have to be very clear about various aspects of each project. We are the outcomes as projected. Are the costs stated properly, taking into account fluctuations as can be anticipated at the point of conceptualization? Above all, do we have the money to finance the project? Even if we do have financial resources at present, will it lead to a long-term continuing drain on our resources that will be like a tax on future generations? Do we have the technical and manpower resources to take up the project and complete it within a given time frame? What will be the consequences of cost and time overruns? Every project, when it is conceived provincially, must also be built on a realistic consciousness of national priorities and policies. And wherever they have a central dimension, we have to take that into account also when we are formulating the project. Also, when there is a multiplicity of projects competing for attention, we, we need to prioritize what we will do to meet the most urgent felt needs. There are a number of very good projects going on. But we can't do all of them. We just don't have the money. We, we don't have the resources. We don't have the technical manpower. So we have to select what we are going to do. What is What will lead to the maximization of the welfare of the people of the state, of this country. And I think also that a system of monitoring milestones and fixing accountability should be built into any project. We have a number of cases all over India. You can take defense, you can take railways, you can take national highways, and you can take projects in Kerala. There are a lot of infrastructure projects which I come will know, which have gone on for years and years without uh, really seeing its end. And the original cost got multiplied many times. Now, this is an inefficient way of doing things, and I hope that project management will help us resolve this kind of issue. So I'm extremely happy that you have established in Kerala, and I hope it will lead to a sea change in the way we view projects <coughs> and the way we implement them. I'm glad to see that there is an outreach program to educational institutions. I note the fact that 130 universities were started in China once they came to know the importance of project management. I think it's critical. And I'm uh, happy to see also that there is a certification system embedded in the concept of the EU itself. The State Planning Board will look to active assistance from the Project Management Association. I'm sure government departments will also gain positively from the technical help they could secure from the Project Management Association. I wish the Trivandrum chapter all success. Thank you very much.